Welcome back to Painting the Light. I'm so happy to be here with you again and I really hope you enjoy today's episode. So I have my standard 18 by 24 inch canvas and I'm using this size because it's quite large and it also shows nice on the screen. So I think today we'll do a nice mountain scene with some big fluffy clouds and I want to pay attention to a big waterfall here. So I have applied a thin even coat of liquid white just to make the blending easier. And let's set off immediately with a twinge brush and some phthalo blue here. Just tap in some phthalo blue. And we're tapping like that because we want a nice even distribution of color on the end of the bristles. And let's start up here using our crisscross strokes. And as you can see, the color is blending with the liquid white. So it's getting lighter and lighter as I want towards the horizon. And I want to do a nice painting today. I'm going to use the oval brush to paint foliage, maybe have some evergreen trees. Whatever you like in here, you can do. And I really hope you enjoyed what we're going to do here today using crisscross strokes as always and come back and forth and blend the colors the color with the liquid white make it a little bit softer just like that a nice blue sky just like that go back and forth, back and forth and just very very lightly bring all this together and by the time I want the big waterfall here let's add some water I'm gonna take some Prussian blue now make it a little bit darker doesn't matter if we pick some of the table of blue too we just want a dark blue color here I'm gonna add the least little amount of sharp green and this one but a very small amount very very small amount and let's give it a test first. Let's go down here. We just want to fill this in. And as you can see, we have the green in here just to make it look a little bit dirty, if you know what I mean. Light's gonna play in here anyway. And by the time we're brush mixing the colors, we're achieving all kinds of nice effects on the brush so we deliver that on canvas. And when painting water, we're starting from the bottom and working upwards so we have some nice blending here to achieve depth just like that back and forth, back and forth and we have some nice rough water here, it's a very nice effect and by the time we have the liquid white on we don't have a lot of things to worry everything happens automatically okay Let's build some clouds now. Let's use a twins brush for that. And I'm gonna go into some titanium white. Use a lot of paint for that. And I'm gonna take the least little amount of bright red to that. But not much. Load the brush with a lot of paint. And we're gonna use just the corner of the brush now. Decide where you want your clouds to be. Let's come up here and Let's use this side of the brush. Make big circular strokes as always. Use the other side too. Just return and load your brush as necessary. Big fluffy cloud here. And let's let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay now. Let's blend all this. We're gonna use the top corner of a clean and dry twins brush and blend the bottom of the cloud. We're gonna make it softer here. But do not touch the top yet. Now fluff this up by making big circular strokes. And these are very, very gentle strokes we're doing here. We're just lifting up the paint. And now very gently, just caress the cloud here. 
And we have a nice soft cloud. Let's make another one. Let's in white and the little amount of bright red. And let's come down here now. Circular strokes. Big fluff cloud here. And you can have as many or as few as you want. Blend this one a little bit. And you can use the twins brush, the ones brush, the round brush makes excellent clouds, or even the fan brush, whatever you like. You can have lots of nice different clouds by using different brushes too. Now very gently go across that, that easy and that quickly. We have a nice sky here and you can see we have different variations of colors. Because we have brush mixed the red on brush with white and it seems like light is playing through here. And if you do not like a cloud, just scrape off with a knife and apply more color, more white. Okay, let's have a big mountain today. And for that, I'm going to use some ivory black, some Prussian blue, a little bit of Van Dyke brown, and some Alizarin crimson. And in here I have some leftover paint for, from another time, so we're going to save some paint today. Pull out the color here and just cut off a little roll of paint. We don't need much, okay? So let's come up here and decide where you want your mountain to be. And let's, let's come up here, make it a little bit big today. Use a lot of pressure for that. A lot of pressure. Just like that. We have to decide for a very distinct outline here. Just remove some paint. And you can have as many peaks or as few as you want. Remove the excess paint from here. Just scrape off all the excess paint because this will help us apply the highlights and the shadows easier. Just remove the excess paint. be mean with that now. Okay, now we're gonna take a tinge brush, let's take a clean one, no I need, I'm gonna need that. Let's take one of the dirty ones, let's take the one we painted the sky with and let's pull downwards. So in here we are, we are removing more paint and we're getting closer to preparing the mountain for highlights and stuff. All of the angles of the mountains here. And we want a distinct top compared to a misty, diffused bottom because this is how mountains are in reality. They always have mist in the bottom and are darker on top. And I'm gonna follow these angles now. Let this a little bit in here. Just pull the paint. We have the liquid white underneath, so we do not have to worry much. If we didn't have any paint underneath, it would be very, very hard to blend. But this just makes it easier. Okay. And now we have the basic outline of the mountain, so we can start applying highlights. I'm gonna take the clean knife. Let's use the number 10 knife. And I'm gonna take some white, pull this out very, very flat in here, and cut off a little roll of paint. So let's paint snow on the mountain, and we want a very delicate touch here. So start from the top and just let it float like that. Follow the angles of the mountain, just move the knife a little bit in here some snow on this one, this is further away 
Let's come to the blade wind here and follow the angles and no pressure. You see, this paint breaks because we do not have a lot of underneath paint and also it's a very, very firm paint we're using in here. It's very important to have a firm paint, otherwise it won't break like that. When I use more paint, let's come in here and just, just let it dance around a little bit. And now let's do the highest peak. Come in here and just like that. Let it dance. Just move your knife like that. Just go up and down. And a little bit on this one too. Let's leave the others dark. So I'm gonna take some white and a little bit of pale of blue here. Just make a nice shadow color. A little bit more white. Overmix your colors, just a little bit more blue. I want it a little bit darker. Pull it out very flat and cut across the same way we do. So let's come up here and do the same thing. Just caress the canvas. And now in the small areas, you can just load the small edge of the knife like that. And you're ending up with a roll of paint and the small edge of the knife, so it's much, much easier to sneak in here. Just apply the shadows. Let's do the same in here. Always remember that each highlight needs its private shadow. It's very, very important to make it stand out a little bit. And in here in the high peak, let's start from the top and just let it go like that. And it's also very nice to come back in the white paint and just paint another peak in here. You can have as many as of you as you want. But always remember to follow the angles of the mountain and let the paint break. Absolutely no pressure for that. You just need to caress the canvas. And do the same thing in this one in the back. You know what's interesting? I'll tell you, sometimes it's nice to take some of this paint here you have, you have used for the mountain. But take a very, very small amount and go back in here in the shadows and just Let's put some indications back in here of very dark areas, but not much paint, very, very little paint because it's way too dark, it's gonna destroy what you have built up here. Just caress it a little bit. Okay. Return to my white at some point and just add some more detail back in here. Roughen up the edges and let's build more shadows. We want some more shadows in here. And this private one. Let's come a little bit forward, take some more white. Let's have another peak. Let's add some snow up here. Now you can just always come back and change your mind. It's very, very important that you can do that. Let's leave these two peaks without highlights or anything. They're going to be far, far away because there are going to be a lot of peaks on this mountain. Let's come up here and paint another peak. Just like that. And I'm going to return to my shadow color. Just caress it. No pressure at all. And as you can see, when we are applying the shadows, these peaks come alive. You can see they are standing out. This is very, very important here. And 
push the other peak back here too. And I'm gonna bring a little valley in between these two peaks. So let's just do that. By the time we're having firm pains, we can go above each other without having lots of problems. And I think we have a very nice mountain. Let's not overdo. Now I'm gonna take a clean twinch brush and let's diffuse the bottom a little bit. Just follow the angle of the mountain and top very, very gently here. So we're not going like this when we are painting, for example, foothills. We just need to follow the angles of the mountain. And we're not using a lot of pressure and not going very high. We're just diffusing the bottom here. So it looks, it looks light and misty. Just like that, lift it up a little bit. Just lift it up. And do the same back here. A very, very gentle touch. But do not overdo, this is the secret. Remove any excess paint you might have picked up. And let's bring some of this blue color here. Maybe there is another valley or something. Follow these angles now. And if there is a place that you do not like, you can always scrape this off and go again, give it a try. And that easily and that quickly we have a nice mountain here. Okay, let's build some faraway trees here. I'm gonna use a fan brush. This is a number six fan brush. And I'm gonna go into some subgreen. I'm gonna take the least little amount of ivory black because it's very very strong it's not like the midnight black here I'm taking some white and I want to paint some nice little trees maybe a little bit more black and I'm gonna add a little amount of brown too a little bit of brown a little bit darker for me just play through the colors and by the time we're brush mixing this we're gonna end up with a uh, lot of variations and nice colors. So let's put this to a test. Let's go here. I really hope you can see what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna just tap downwards. Let's start from here. I'm gonna show you how to do it. Just tap. Hope you can see it. Well, my hand is in front, but what I'm doing is just going like that. Let's make some faraway trees that are right in front of the mountain. So this is what you're gonna do when you do it on yourself at home. And when you're painting this, just remember to fill in any gaps you might be getting by tapping in between. This is a very nice and relaxing way of painting. I really hope you enjoy what we're doing here. And I'm really looking forward to seeing your own versions of these paintings. Just leave me a message at, on Facebook or on Instagram. I'd love to hear from you. So, we're just going back and forth the same color, but do not kill this misty area here. It's gonna be our separator. So, in order to make this kind of trees more successful, you just need to have a very nice sharp edge on your brush. You can also use a 2 inch brush or the 1 inch brush for that. If you use other brushes, you're gonna end up with a different effect, but this is alright if you want to do something different. In here we're just more detailed and I think it's very nice to paint this kind of trick with a fan brush. And try not to make them all the same size or height. Just play around a little bit, but for, don't forget to save the misty area here. Just go like that. Go back and forth in your paint. And by the time your brush is running out of paint, you're having a lot of variations of different trees in here. I know I'm telling this in every episode, but 
it's very, very important to remember how things work because when you're getting used to the equipment and the nice effects, things are going to be much easier for you and you can experiment, try different things and I really hope this makes you happy. This is so important for me to be able to share my love for this kind of paint for you. I mean this kind of painting with you. I know my English is not perfect because it's not my mother language but I really hope I'm doing well enough for you to understand what I'm saying. So let's have a reflection. Maybe this is a lake or something. So fill in some gaps, especially in the edges because I want to have a roundish leg or something. Okay, let's take a clean and dry twins brush and let's decide where we want our leg to be. Start from here and just pull. And by the time we have the liquid white, it's so so easy to pull the paint down. pull straight down, this is most most important and even if you are gonna have a roundish kind of leg here and you have to turn the brush a little bit to achieve the effect make sure you pull straight down like that and then very very gently go across maybe in here a little bit more blending, make it softer Very, very gently go across, just caress it. It's so easy to have a nice reflection, this is how we do them. And I'm gonna take the least little amount of liquid white in here, mix it with some firm white. I'm gonna take a very small amount of dark sienna for that, leave it like marble, and just go across. And we're gonna paint some water lines, something to separate all these. Use a lot of pressure for that and just make them as straight as you can. Just a little bit of paint. Make straight lines. Just like that. If you have some that are very distinct, you can just go above and work them a little bit into the fabric and they will go away. Just like that. Can you see how easy it is? And you're getting a nice water effect here too. Okay. Let's come forward now. We have some nice water here. I want to save this area. So let's have a smaller waterfall from what I had in mind. So we'll need something to hold the waterfall. I want to have some big trees and bushes here. So let's see what we're gonna start doing now. Let's use the palette knife. Let's paint some rocks first that we're gonna use to hold all these. Gonna take some Van Dyke Brown here. We're gonna need some paint now. Let's use the knife. Let's make a basic line in here. Let's go in here make the outline first and then we're going to just pull down there's quite a bit of paint for that and by the time we want a roundish kind of waterfall here, some pond or something I want uh, less length here, make them shorter and in here I'm going to make them higher I'm talking about the rocks right now. And it doesn't matter if you get some kind of scraps here from your knife. So we're gonna need an opening from for the waterfall. Let's make it a little bit bigger here. Let's come this way. Gonna have a big waterfall. And now I'm gonna use the same technique in here too. Just make it higher as they come closer to us.
make the outline first. So in here, when we are standing closer, when we are standing close to what we're doing, it's very difficult to see if our angles are right or anything. So it's wise to step back a little bit and see what you have and then fix whatever you don't like. So let's see here. So what I see is that we not have a straight line in between these rocks. So let's try to bring them the same height as the others. Let's come up here. And now we're talking. Just apply some color. Always do that at home when you're painting anything. It's very, very important to step back and see what you can make better. Okay. And let's make it a little bit higher. Nothing we can't fix here. Okay, so let's highlight this now. I'm gonna take some dark sienna here and some of this white and blue. A little bit marbly and get a roll of paint in here. We don't have lots of variations of colors, so let's come here and adding no pressure but no pressure at all you can see that the colors are blending and we're having some nice rock effects just caress it a little bit and do the same thing here too it's very very important to add no pressure at all when you're doing that very nice so let's play with what's above first. Let's use, let's use, I'm gonna take, maybe use a one inch brush today to paint the back of the bushes. And I'm gonna mix a dark color here. I'm gonna take the mountain color that I'm having here with what I have left over. Just add a little bit of black to that. It's all the dark colors, nothing important. the one's brush now and just pull it through the paint just add some dark color and use the round corner up let's have some bushes that are living just above our waterfall here just pushing some basic shapes add a little bit of color each time and it doesn't matter if you go above the rocks because we're gonna have some leaves hanging above the rocks and it will gonna look very very nice come in here too and let's go to the other side to make a small one in here and have a build up of color so i'm gonna take some of this and you can save some paint sometimes when you're doing that if you have a lot of paint at some point you can just come back and take some and as you can see I can move it on other places of the canvas just feeling some dark paint make them as high or as short as you want and we mainly want dark paint here okay right now let's go Let's use the fan brush, number six fan brush, lot of paint, lot, lot of paint. And let's come up here and make some evergreens. Let's have a big one in here. Doesn't matter if it is in front of the mountain, but if you have some peaks that you like a lot, just save them. And this is also helpful when you do not like something, you can cover it. Seriously, nothing to worry about here. So I'm just going back and forth using just the corner of the brush. And apply more and more pressure as you go downwards. And that is easily we have a nice evergreen tree. Let's build another one. Just use the corner and then use more and more of the brush and more and more pressure. 
And it's okay if you want to reload your brush and you're running out of paint. It doesn't matter. Let's have a small one in here. I want to save this pick. I just love it. And we're also saving a little bit of what we have in the back from the reflection in the water. Just a baby tree here. Okay. Let's go to the other side. We have more space there, so let's build more trees. This is going to give you good practice. Make the center line. And let's just do the same thing over and over. If you do not want evergreens or you want another kind of tree, then just go on and do what you like. More paint here, make a bigger one. Remember to leave space in between each branch. It's very, very important. And we're using firm paint here in the start. And then we're gonna come with a bit of lighter paint. Let's, let's build a bigger one here. As you can see, and as you already know, you have painted here before. I'm just in love with evergreen trees, and if I could, I'd really like to have them in every painting I'm doing. It's nice to paint different things too. Another one. Let's have a last one. Make sure you have a good fun brush for that. And I'm using the number 6 here. If you want, you can use number 3. Or whatever size you like. Okay. Now let's build the trunks. I'm gonna use the same color that I highlighted the rocks with and it's a number five knife. Just touch and pull, touch and pull and make bigger moves when you're going downwards because the tree trunk is thicker in the bottom compared to the top. And do the same thing to these ones. Very, very easy to do and it's so nice, so heartwarming. And the more you do the same thing, the better you become. Just always remember to practice and never give up. It's very important not to give up. So I'm going to use the same brush. I'm going to remove most of the dark paint. And I'm going to go into the paint thinner, just a couple of drops and go into the cadmium yellow here, let's make a dark green color. Use a lot of paint. Let's go into some sub green too. A little bit more paint in it. But just a drop is enough. Load both sides full of paint, some more green. Don't have nice variations of colors on the brush as you can see. Okay. And now the mountain tells us that the lights coming from the right, so we want all the trees to have more highlight on the right. Let's start from here and just touch, be very very careful here, do not let your brush to slide. And by the time evergreens are merely dark, you don't want the highlights very very distinct. Okay, do the same thing to the baby here. And do the same to the other trees too. Just go above the dark. Make the bristles to bend. And do the same thing on the big one. And as you can see they come to life very quickly. And that is easily we have finished some evergreen trees. I'll tell you what, let's leave the bushes for a wee while and let's pay attention to the waterfall because we're gonna paint the water now 
and I want to seclude this with the rocks. So let's go into another fan brush and go into some liquid white. And the liquid white is here just to make the paint thinner and flow easier. And I'm going to take some blue for that. Small, small amount of blue. Load both sides of the bristles. And let's decide where we want our waterfall to be. Let's make a big splash here. And just let's come from here and go just like that. If you pick up some dark color, remove it on the paper towel. Just go back and forth. Just like that. And you can go over and over again without a big problem. Okay. Now we're gonna bring some of the rocks down. So let's go back to the Van Dyke Brown. Let's get something to hold all these. So we made the basic outline of where we want our waterfall to be. And then we came back to seclude it. Nothing wrong with that. Just like that. Just like that. And then return to the highlight color. This is just a little bit of white and blue with dark sienna. Just caress it. Just caress it. And we have bring it will have brought all this together. Now Let's apply a little bit of color here, the side of the final outline. So by working in layers when painting these rocks, you can just control everything and decide where you want things to be. And here I'm just bringing all this together with dark fur, with dark color first, and then I'm using the highlights. So, tell you something, let's do something else. Take the twins brush, and I'm gonna have a little bit of a reflection in here. I just love this water, and I just want to pull down just a little bit of this. And do the same thing in here too. Make sure you pull straight down, straight down. And very very gently go across to make the water effect. Just like that. And by the time we have the waterfall we need some big splashes. So just use the corner of the brush here and just bend it. Can you see now that we have a more consistent waterfall. I'm gonna add some liquid white. Let's come, let's come above this. Let's be brave. Just come above that place here. Just like that. And now we can see through the waterfall. Use the corner and tuck. As you can see, very, very easily. We can push this rock back. Now make some splashes in just a corner and I'm going all the way with the corner of the brush and I'm pushing gently some nice watery effects here remove some of the brown that we have picked up and do the same thing here just like that it's so easy to do, it's so nice and by the time we're picking up some of this brown it looks like there are rocks behind. So, so nice. Just let colors blend together. Do not fight it. Do not say that, oh, I have picked out a lot of brown and it's destroying my, my splashes and my color. This is alright. Just make some more here. I want them to be a little bit more distinct. But leave some gaps in between the former splashes here. As you can see, it's so, so nice. Lots of water. Lots of movement. And do the same thing in here too. 
and remove some of my brown color, return to my white with the blue. And if your paint won't flow nicely, just add a little amount of liquid white. Now I'm gonna use my fan brush in here to bring all this together. And I have the water here. And you need to do straight strokes. Can you see the movement that we have achieved here? And caress the reflection a little bit, bring some of these colors into the water. Now I'm going to remove most of the paint that I have on the brush and very very gently blend all this together. Very very nicely. Okay, and now that we have finished with water, we can just return to our bushes. Let's use the oval brush for that, but you can use whatever brush you want. So let's go into some paint thinner, but not a lot. I'm going to my cadmium yellow here, I'm going to take some sub green and play through the yellows and just tap, just tap so you can take a lot of paint on the edge of the bristles, let's thin it down a little bit, it's way too thick. It's a very, very small amount of paint thinner. Just tap to load it. Now, going very, very gentle above, let's take, let's come up here. Just tap. Make some nice bushes. And remember to leave dark areas in between so we have not a flat painting here. It's gonna add a little bit of interest. Just be very gentle with that. And a big one that goes right above the waterfall. Let's be brave again. Playing through my colors here and let's just come up here. Can you see now that we have some foliage in front of the waterfall and this is going to add a lot of interest to what we are doing. Remember to build bushes in layers, so I want to have three layers in here. I'm going to put more that are going to be above the rocks. Let's do them. Let's do them. Let's come up here. Can you see how nice they look? And this is where everything comes together. We want to have consistency in our paintings. Just like that. And I'm gonna go into the other side too. Let's start from this one now. Let's come up here. If your paint won't stick, just thin it down a little bit. And do the same thing in layers. Always remember to paint in layers, this is very, very important. And let's come up here, as you can see, it sticks nicely because we have thinned the, the paint down a little bit. Okay. Paint one bush at a time. And be very gentle, just tap the canvas. Very, very gently and let the bristles do the work. Make sure you have natural bristle brushes to paint with this technique, otherwise you won't manage to achieve a nice effect we have here. Okay, now I'm gonna take a clean knife and just scratch in some nice ticks and twigs that are playing around here. This will make our bushes even more interesting. Give them character. Make them individuals. And do the same thing on the other side too. And it's so easy to do that people will think that it's a lot of detail and hard work, but it just takes a clean knife to do that. 
And yet it looks very, very realistic. Okay. And I think that we have come to finished painting. This gives you a lot of practice and experiencing lots of different things. We have painted so many nice things. And you can always add more if you want. You can uh, push everything back and build another piece of land. I just love the water here. And I just thought the waterfall would be something different, something nice to see today. And I really hope you give this a try. Let me know if you do so. So until next time, I'd like to wish you happy painting and take care. Thank you very much for watching.